while Plaid meet by the seaside in North Wales, the Sussex Resort of Eastbourne will provide the venue this week for the annual conference of another party, UKIP, the United Kingdom Independence Party. That party is now led for a second time by Nigel Farage. I've been talking to him about his party's relationship with anti-EU, anti-immigration parties in other EU countries and about his decision to invite the leader of the True Finns party to speak at Eastbourne. But first I asked him if he'd be saying anything new at the conference about UKIP's strategy. There is going to be one thing at this conference that people will see that is a little bit different. The theme of our conference is standing up for the nation and yes we've always wanted to stand up for the nation and we noticed that across Northern Europe there are many others who are doing the same thing. But the one question that UKIP has been very poor I think at answering in the past and that will begin to answer in Eastbourne is the whole question of, of the relationships that exist currently within the United Kingdom. And I'm going to be saying in my speech that the English really have had an absolutely rotten deal and that it really is high time that the English MPs only voted on English legislation, that we head towards the creation of an English Parliament because that is now desired, that is now needed, and that we get a better financial arrangement between England and Scotland. And that will be the one shift, I think, in debate within the party at this conference. What about learning from the successes of other right-wing parties in Europe who have made breakthroughs in their national parliaments, in Holland, in Finland, for example? Although they have, haven't they, campaigned very strongly on an anti-immigration ticket and some are very hostile to Muslim immigration yes. in particular. How do you view some of the rhetoric they're employing? Some of the right-wing parties across Northern Europe would not be natural friends of ours. However, the leader of the Finns party, Timo Soni, who very nearly won the general election there, is very much a friend of ours. And he campaigned on stopping the bailouts. He is the person who is changing the whole political debate within the Eurozone. And he will be a guest of ours at this conference. How do we learn well, from parties like them? he's your key like speaker, them? isn't he? Yes, he's he is. Guest speaker. How, how do we learn from parties like them? Well, listen, they have proportional representation and we have first past the post. Timo Sony's True Finns party was able to get 19% of the vote in the Finnish general election. Remember that UKIP got 17% of the vote in the Euro elections of 2009. So when it comes to proportional representation, we do stunningly well. We find it very much more difficult under first past the post. You might like what the true Finns are saying on, on the bailout, but one of their policies is to encourage more young women to stay at home, to give birth to more pure Finnish children, rather than plugging the gap caused by a low birth rate with immigration. Now, some might argue you that your choice of guest speaker would pose a question about UKIP's claim to be non-racist and libertarian if it seems to be supporting that kind of policy. Well, I don't think the true Finns as a party support that policy, but I think Timo Sony as a Roman Catholic may talk very strongly about the family. Look, we are a non-sectarian... No, but do you support a policy like that, which is being pushed by their party? No, we support the Eurosceptic mainstream agenda that is now growing across Northern Europe, that has manifest itself in Finland in the most dramatic way. And it is on the back of that Finnish result that we're now beginning to see some real resistance in Germany too. And I think there are some really big, huge, seismic changes taking place, certainly within the Eurozone, and I think within the European Union as a whole. And I think UKIP is very much at the heart of that debate. But how much further would you be prepared to go on the anti-immigration ticket? What we are very upset about is the fact that successive British governments seem to have pursued deliberately a policy of mass immigration into this country and by dint of our membership of the EU have now led us into a situation where we have a total open door to the whole of Eastern Europe. And so our message on immigration is very simple. Let's get back control of our country, let's issue work permits where we need them, but let's put a real stop to mass immigration and the recognition that we can't do that as EU members. You know that you have had criticism for what you've said in the past. People have derided you sometimes as a, a bunch of right-wing fruitcakes. I think there have been various other select quotes. Mm. You, in, you insist that you get support from across the political spectrum and you deny you're a very right-wing or racist party. But why not be more right-wing? Why not speak more about immigration? You, you might then become an authentic alternative to the Conservatives. It's interesting. I mean, I remember being very heavily vilified 
back in 2004 when I said that opening up the European Union to Poland and other countries like that would lead to a flood of people into Britain. Vilified we were. In fact, the government told us only 13,000 people a year would come to Britain and I think three quarters of a million came in the first two years. So we're used to being criticised on this. I think the important thing about this whole right-wing and left-wing argument is that the idea that we should make our own laws in our own country the idea that we should control our borders and that we alone should choose in our own parliament who comes to live, work and settle in this country, I reject that these are right-wing or left-wing ideas. You would find as much support for those views within old Labour as you would find amongst Shire Conservatives. So, frankly, British politics has one clear divide. We have three parties who are perfectly happy for 75% plus of our laws to be made somewhere else, and we have one party in UKIP who thinks the British should govern ourselves. That's the real dividing line. But if you go further, is it a worry about being regarded as a, a paler version of the BMP We're not that is holding go you back? We're not going to go any further. Listen, we are a non-racist political party. We have many people from the ethnic minorities joining UKIP, standing for UKIP, running for leadership, running for London Mayor. That is not our agenda. We are a thousand miles away from anything the BMP stands for. We are, in essence, a libertarian party that believes there is too much government, believes we pay too many taxes, and above all, really absolutely loathe the fact that so many of our laws are made by unelected bureaucrats based in Brussels. We have nothing to do with any hard, far-right, racist agenda whatsoever. In fact, I would argue that what we are speaking about on these big issues is right at the heart, right at the centre of mainstream public opinion. But what evidence do you have? Because any survey that seems to be done mentions Europe pretty low down on the list of concerns behind the economy, unemployment, NHS, crime, etc. Well, this is the old BBC trick of treating Europe and presenting it to people in these opinion polls as being, you know, Article 36, Subsection 2, Clause 3. What people are concerned about... I'm certainly not trying to engage in, in trickery. I, I'm just trying to establish whether you feel that it may be a problem for you if people still think of you as a, a single-issue party, I don't think only, only thinking about Europe. Look... Immigration is one of the biggest issues in this country today. People know there is nothing Cameron can do about immigration because we have an open door to the whole of Eastern Europe. That is a European question. It isn't a separate debate on immigration. It is one and the same thing. So talk about immigration. Talk about jobs. Talk about British jobs for British workers. Talk about the Bombardier factory in Derby that the contract gets awarded to Siemens under EU procurement rules. You're right. People couldn't care less about European treaties but are they interested in the implications of EU membership? You bet they are. Nigel Farage. Should MPs be at the...